Hello, it's Saturday the 17th of October. You're tuned in to our 6pm newscast coming to you from Ali Dung's News Centre in Seoul. It's very good to have you with us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this evening, South Korea and the United States have, for the first time, adopted a joint statement countering North Korea's nuclear ambitions. The statement was released following summit talks between President Park and Hay and her US counterpart Barack Obama at the White House. Our Hwang Sang-yi reports from Washington. South Korea and the U.S. agreed to address North Korea's nuclear ambitions with utmost urgency and determination. Following Friday's summit at the White House on Friday, President Park and President Obama adopted a joint statement dealing solely with North Korea. The leaders reaffirmed that Pyongyang will never be accepted as a nuclear weapon state, vowing to enhance their close collaboration against North Korean provocations. Today, President Park and I are reaffirming that our nations will never accept North Korea as a nuclear weapons state. We will continue to insist that Pyongyang must abide by its obligations on the complete and verifiable denuclearization of the peninsula in a peaceful manner. Nonetheless, they stressed that South Korea and the U.S. remain open to dialogue pledging to work with China and other parties, namely Russia and Japan, to bring North Korea back to credible and meaningful nuclear talks. President Park and Obama also said their two countries stand ready to assist Pyongyang's economic development under certain preconditions. Noting President Park's efforts to improve inter-Korean relations, the U.S. said it will give its full support and agree to intensify high-level consultations to promote the peaceful reunification of the Korean Peninsula. As this marks the first time that the two allies adopted a separate statement on North Korea, South Korea's presidential office said that it shows how committed Seoul and Washington are in ending North Korea's nuclear weapons program. Hwang Sang-hee, Arirang News, Washington. Now, following up on that report, the two leaders also agreed to upgrade their already significant bilateral cooperation in economic areas. Presidents Park and Obama shared an understanding that South Korea will eventually be a part of the mega trade pact known as the Trans-Pacific Partnership, or TPP. Park ji -won has the details. South Korea and the United States, who already have their own free trade agreement, which entered into force in 2012, have decided to deepen their economic cooperation even further. The leaders agreed to boost their bilateral cooperation in state-of-the-art technologies, including space science and cybersecurity. Presidents Park and Obama also decided to launch a coordinating channel between Seoul and Washington so they can swiftly respond to any cybersecurity challenges. Coordinating at the highest levels, the White House and the Blue House, making sure that we're in sync in dealing with that challenge. The two leaders also cemented the strength of the South Korea and U.S. Security Alliance. They shared a common understanding on South Korea's strength in relations with China as Seoul attempts to foster regional peace and stability. Obama expressed his support for South Korea's increasingly close ties with China. His remarks dispelled some experts' concerns that Washington was unhappy with the strength of Seoul-Beijing ties. We want uh, South Korea to have a strong relationship with China, just as we want to have a strong relationship with China. With the summit and the joint press conference, President Park Geun-hye wrapped up her four-day stay in Washington. Park Ji-won, Arirang News. 
Now, South Korea's rival parties were mixed in their response to the outcome of the summit. The ruling Sonuri party noted the first adoption of a joint statement exclusively on North Korea. A spokesperson for the party said it showed Seoul and Washington have made North Korea's denuclearization a top priority. The main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy was critical of the agreement. It said Presidents Park and Obama should have thought of more creative ways to resolve the North Korean nuclear issue. The MPAD also said President Park should have done more to push Washington to overturn its refusal to transfer some key technologies needed for South Korea's fighter jet project codenamed KFX. South Korea and the United States inked a total of 24 MOUs in the fields of medical science, energy and space sciences during President Park's trip. One of them will see the two countries work together on research and finding a vaccine for Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, otherwise known as MERS. Earlier this year, South Korea was hit with an outbreak of the virus. It infected 186 people with a death toll of 36. The agreement is a follow-up measure to an MOU signed in June between South Korea's health ministry and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Now, a renowned security expert in the United States has warned that North Korea could master the technology needed to produce a submarine-launched ballistic missile in the next five to ten years. Speaking at the Washington-based Carnegie Endowment for International Peace on Friday local time, Theodore Postel, a professor of science, technology and national security at MIT, said that if North Korea developed the capability, the so-called SLBMs would be more of a security threat than the regime's intercontinental ballistic missiles. He said the KN-08 ICBM North Korea uh, displayed at last Saturday's military parade in Pyongyang as you can see there, was likely a mock-up. The professor also questioned how advanced the regime's ICBM technology actually is, suggesting North Korea could need another 10 to 20 years to have a reliable missile. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has sent a ritual offering to mark an annual autumn festival at a controversial war shrine in Tokyo. The Asukuni Shrine honors Japan's war dead, including several Class A war criminals. Abe's move is likely to anger Korea and China, both victims of Japan's past militarism. It also comes ahead of a trilateral summit between the three countries, their first in over three years. Now, Japanese media says the talks will be held on Sunday, November 1st, in Seoul, but nothing official has been released yet. There's the possibility President Park and Hay and Abe could hold a bilateral summit on the sidelines of the three-way talks. President Park said this week that she was open to a meeting, but Seoul wants to see meaningful progress on resolving the issue of Japan. Uh, the Japanese military's sexual enslavement of Korean women before and during World War II. Now, more bad news for scandal-hit Volkswagen. The German automaker's Korea unit will recall almost 28,000 cars in Korea, not over the emissions cheating software, but because of defective airbags. The problem is that the spring in the steering wheel assembly can become fouled, ripping a cable that controls the electrical connection to the front airbags. And if that happens, the airbags won't deploy in a crash. Now, Volkswagen Korea uh, has reportedly told the government that seven models are included in the recall. They are the Golf, Jetta, CC, Passat, Shirocco, Tiguan and EOS from the 2010 through 2014 model years. No word yet on when the recall will happen, but Volkswagen Korea will announce the date once it has the necessary supplies in place. Now, a unique marriage took place in Korea on Friday. It wasn't between two people, but two buildings. The ceremony commemorated Gyeongju City's royal past and marks the end of the Silk Road Cultural Festival. Gwanjang Oh has more. This is the Gyeongju Tower. It was built in 2007 and represents the Hwangyongsa Temple Tower that stood at the location over a thousand years ago. And now, meet its new husband, the Jungdo Tower. Completed earlier this year, just a stone's throw away from its wife, it is a replica of the Hwangyongsa Tower recreated from the designs left in ancient records. The Hwangyongsa Temple was the jewel of the Shilla Kingdom when it was built in the 7th century. 
At the time, the main nine-storey tower was the tallest structure in Asia, standing at 263 feet. The temple and its tower stood for almost 600 years before it was destroyed by Mongolian invaders in the 13th century. Now the two modern towers, commemorating the temple and Gyeongju city's royal past, have been married to symbolize the hope of reunification of Korea. Much like when Queen Seondeok built Hwangnyongsa Tower dreaming of world peace, the union of the two towers represents the hope for a peaceful and united Korea. Hundreds of Gyeongju residents came out for the lavish ceremony, which was held in front of the bride. It's hoped the newlyweds will have a long and happy marriage. Kwon Jang-ho, Arirang News. Now finally taking a brief look at the weather, most of the country is under clear skies this evening. Tonight's low in Seoul will dip to a chilly 9 degrees Celsius, but Sunday will be clear, sunny and warm, uh, with temperatures nationwide in the mid-20s. And we can expect similar conditions for the whole of next week as well. With that, let's take a look at the weather around the world. Well, that's all we have for now. Do enjoy the rest of your Saturday, wherever you're watching us, and stay tuned to Adi Lang TV. We'll be back again with our next newscast at 10 p.m. Korea time. Until then, goodbye.